One of the most common questions we get is how much does commercial solar cost and does it make financial sense to switch to solar? Unfortunately, we can't really answer that question without first considering the four factors that contribute to the economics of a commercial solar project. If you're interested in commercial solar for your organization, you're in the right place. Hi, I'm Eric. And welcome back to Going Solar with Pivot Energy, where we cover all things solar energy, commercial solar, financial incentives, and community solar. Without further ado, let's dive into the four factors that contribute to a commercial solar project's economics and viability. The four factors are solar resource, electricity costs, policies and incentives, and materials and construction costs. Let's start with solar resource first. It's important to consider the amount of sunlight available in your geographic area and at your property. How much sunlight does your city or town get throughout the year? You can calculate your solar resource from historical weather data, or you can consult a solar expert like Pivot Energy. Weather data is built into our solar production modeling process, but we'll talk more about us later. Don't live in the sunniest climate? No need to worry, because like I always say to our customers, geography is not destiny. Climates that tend to have more cloudy, rainy, or variant weather conditions can still produce significant solar energy. By simply increasing the size of your project, you can generate a similar amount of power in a variable climate like Illinois as you can in a sunny state like Arizona. In addition to your climate, you also need to consider the shading conditions on the properties where you're considering installing solar. If you're planning to install rooftop solar, Check to see if there are any tall buildings or trees shading your rooftop and limiting the amount of sunshine that can reach the panels. If that's true for you, your organization might be a good fit for a different approach to receiving solar energy. One option is you can opt for a virtual power purchase agreement where your organization purchases electricity generated by an offsite system rather than a system on your own property. Learn about how it works in our video, VPPAs Explained, it's linked below. Many states also offer community solar, and Pivot Energy can help you subscribe to community solar if that is an option available where you live. Check out our Community Solar Explained video for more info and to learn how you can sign up. And make sure to subscribe and turn on the bell for more videos on commercial solar and financing. The second key factor for solar economics and one of the biggest considerations is the current and future cost of electricity. With commercial projects, the rate you'll be charged by the utility is a combination of two separate charges. The first is a consumption-based charge or kilowatt hour charge. A kilowatt hour is the energy drawn by consumption of one kilowatt or 1000 watts of power for one hour and is metered by your utility on a monthly basis. The second charge is a demand charge which is measured by the total amount of electricity consumed in a specific period of time, typically a 15 minute interval. Think of turning every electric appliance in your building on at the same time. That is your maximum demand. Demand significantly increases during certain minutes or hours when your building uses the most power. This is also known as a peak demand charge and can account for up to 70% of your total electricity bill. So for example, if you install solar on an office building where electricity demand is highest during the day, solar energy production can help curb those peak demand charges. On the other hand, if the majority of your business's energy is used after the sun goes down, solar on its own won't reduce demand charges on your bill, unless it's installed alongside an energy storage system. But regardless and under both scenarios, solar will reduce your consumption-based charges. Our video on how to decrease demand charges will help you understand how it all works and how you can alleviate peak demand charges with a Solar Plus storage system. When you work with Pivot Energy, we'll review your historic energy usage to identify your most lucrative option. Before you get started, check out the video, What to Know Before Installing Solar, to prepare. All right, now let's move on to the next factor, tax credits, incentives, and policies you should know about that might sweeten the deal for solar. Federal solar incentives combined with varying policies and incentives at the state level are another key factor of a solar project's economics. The U.S. government recently extended the federal investment tax credit, and the credit is valued at 30% of the total cost of your solar project. In addition, your organization can depreciate 100% of the solar asset in its first year of operation, due to solar being eligible for bonus depreciation. 
We have a video all about the ITC extension and how you can take advantage of it, so make sure you check that out to learn more. At the state policy level, several states have net metering policies, which are among the most fruitful policies available. Net metering reduces the retail charges on your utility bill by netting the amount of electricity your system produces against the amount you consume. In addition, if at the end of the billing period, your solar panels generate more electricity than you use from the grid, then the excess electricity is fed back into the grid and you receive a credit on your bill or monetary compensation. With net metering, the consumption-based charges on your bill could actually be $0 per month if your solar system produces enough power. As the government is putting more emphasis on expanding renewable energy, many states are also adding more rebates and production-based incentives, which we cover in our videos within our playlist on solar financing and incentives. Solar policies and incentives are a major driving factor when you look at the financial viability of any project and can significantly reduce the total project cost and increase your savings. And now on to the final factor of solar economics, materials and construction costs. Materials and construction costs are of paramount importance to consider when installing commercial solar. The electrical configuration of your building and where the wiring of your system will feed, as well as the structural integrity of your building and roof, all impact construction cost. There may also be interconnection costs charged by your local utility to connect your system to the electrical grid. The age of your roof and whether it needs to be replaced before solar is installed is another important consideration. It's always best to install solar on a brand new roof as the solar panels will be up there producing clean electricity for 25 years or more and you want to ensure the roof underneath to last just as long. But if you need a new roof anyway, you might as well install one that can actually increase the production of your system and decrease costs even further. More on that in this video. Material costs change based on the supply chain, which is currently quite volatile. We'll be covering solar and procurement in an upcoming video, so don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss it. Labor costs are yet another consideration. A lot of larger solar projects now have prevailing wage requirements, and states with union labor laws can make the project more costly. A state like New York with union laborers and higher wages will increase the cost of installation. But don't write off solar there just yet, because New York also has high electricity costs, combined with lucrative rebates and other incentives which could actually offset that higher cost and make the project financially viable. Since all of the factors we covered today are integrated and play into one another, you have to look at the whole picture. For example, if you live in a sunny climate but there aren't solar incentives in your area and the cost of electricity is generally low, it might not be as fruitful to install commercial solar. Or if you live in a cloudy area but your state's incentives are higher and electricity costs are higher, this project Project may be more financially viable. That's where working with an experienced commercial solar developer, like Pivot Energy, can help you weigh your options by reviewing historical energy data, designing systems that incorporate climate and site conditions, identifying materials and construction costs, and applying available financial incentives to each project to help you make an informed decision to pivot to solar energy. Pivot Energy is a turnkey commercial solar developer that helps you every step along your solar journey, from planning to financing, installation, and maintenance. If you want to learn more about what it's like to work with us, check out our video about what to expect with Pivot. It's linked below, along with all the other videos I mentioned today. If this video helped you understand the economics of commercial solar, then give it a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, and hit the notification bell so you never miss our videos. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.